now we're looking at us being travelers on this cosmic journey and together we're looking at the inner planets today and I've highlighted on this or circled on this training topics where we're going to be going specifically within the gates and lines and of course considering the black and the red from the Ravi Ching perspective of how the planets affect the lines. So we're going to be practicing this week how do we express it in a, a center that's defined in a channel. But we're also today going to be discussing what does it mean when it's completely open versus hanging, you know, all of the different configurations that could be. Now one of these things that we want to uh, consider here is that when you're looking at planets, the planets are within a zodiacal architecture of the mandala wheel and we don't really take into account the zodiacal meanings because we have so much more to work with we have the planets within the gates within the lines and the specific way that each of those little nuances and those points of space can be either exalted or detriment so they're a fundamental aspect of your design planets are like the whole movie without planets we'd have nothing and for thousands of years, many people carefully researched and observed their qualities and how they play out in our lives. We can use this accumulated wisdom, the energy of the planets in your design is constantly upgrading, constantly evolving. If we go back 100 years, Saturn was considered a malefic and it was bringer of doom and death. And these days we have a more enlightened view of how the planets play out for us. In human design, Saturn gives us a correct limitation to keep us on the straight and narrow, as in to keep us on track. It will bring punishment. It will bring pain and suffering. If you're not obeying your own law, if you're not doing what you're designed to be doing, Saturn comes in, the taskmaster, and says, mm -mm, this way. Okay, so pain, really good motivator for human beings, pain can help show us where we might be looking at things askew and perhaps not really focusing on what is important and what is valuable in our designs. So this image um, is an acoustic room. It's an architecturally designed room to be able to give the audience an experience of listening to that sound that is different than if we were in just a little square box. And so if we can think about the planets being these great, Ra would call them the gods, the global orchestration directory, you know, the gods up there in the, in the sky. And we have all of these gods that we're going to look at. Here's the earth. You are here. All these planets. And we're going to be using the material from the black book. I have my black book in front of me. If you guys haven't seen this book, this was the first book that Ra ever wrote on the human design system. Well, the first one he called it was a PDF manual for, for no fault living. Because when you get to this part of design, you recognize there's no fault, there's no blame, there's no shame, there's no guilt, there's no nothing that is directly attributable to who you think you are inside of your head about yourself, because that's a fallacy. It's a falsity. It doesn't exist. It's conditioning, because it's so colored by that conditioning, just the voice inside the head because we are not just this, we are all of this and filtering all of that. So here he says, the position of all the planets, Mercury, Venus, why is the sun right there? Apologies, where did the sun go? There it is, okay. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and the moon, and it's north and south nodes, and the sun and earth, whoops, there's the earth, earth are plotted. So our planets each represent a different kind of energy. It's important to have a basic understanding of their effect. They qualify how each of the opened gates is interpreted. So again, opened gates because a planet is sitting there holding the door open. You can imagine a planet sitting there, hi, I've got an outstretched hand and I'm reaching out to you to the other side. If my, f my outstretched hand, in my case, my unconscious sun is a five, I know that I'm reaching way over there. If I'm a one, I'm just like, mm, maybe not so much. <laughs> I'm doing my own thing, right? And each of those planets have a resonant frequency. So is that hand going to be energetic and forceful, Mars? Or is that hand going to be soft and gentle, maybe kind of 
elusive Neptune, something that's hidden from us that we don't even know our hands outstretched. For me, my Neptunes are in gate five. So I don't even know that my hands outstretched to the 15. It's in a second line on one side. And that particular one, I have no clue, you know, not consciously anyway. So if you can get a, f a sense of these resonant frequencies, this um, on the next slide, we have a list of the planets and their um, meanings from the black book. And then I have the traditional meanings. Now with the keynote information presented in this work, the planets have been studied since the beginning of civilization, the, especially the inner planets, you know, the ones that they can see. And if there are anybody who want to, Ross says, serious students interested in detailed information have access to thousands of books on these, on these subjects. So in this book, he's saying you can look into the ancient astrological values. However, as the years passed, he became more and more specific about how he languaged these planets. He evolved. So we're going to look at first where he came from. This is what is in the black book, the sun your vitality, your power, will, the ego, leadership, the earth, fertility, evolution, design, the root, the moon, feelings, instincts, change, the body. And now, interestingly, other places say the moon is the mind. The Vedic astrology says moon is the mind. And the north node in the black book, he says the line of geometry, where you're going, the path that you're on. South node, line of geometry, where you came from. Mercury is your mind, your awareness, your communication, your mental life. And Venus is art, aesthetics, values, and relationships. Mars, energy, power, desire, assertion, aggression. Jupiter, expansion, opportunity, material matters. Saturn, limitation, restraint, discipline, focus, pain. Uranus, transition, revolution, instability, electricity, invention. Neptune, imagination, psychic phenomena, confusion, drugs. And Pluto, regeneration, compulsion, renewal, the unconscious. So he says that this is sufficient enough to give you a general significance of the planet's, planet's effect on your life in that black book. That's what he used. Now let's take a look at our rave teachers. Now the evolution of what we use. This is in um, your definitive book of human design. We know that the sun is our personality, expression, our life force. In BG5, they call it core essence. The earth, grounding and balance. The moon, your driving force. The North Node, future direction or environment. South Node, past direction or environment. Mercury, communication, thinking. So easy yeah, to remember. At least these phrases, if you can remember this. Venus, your values, sociology. Mars, immature energy dynamic or immaturity, a maturing energy. Jupiter, your law and protection. Saturn, the discipline, the judge, restraint. Uranus, unusualness, chaos and order, science. I would add innovation, any kind of experimentation. Your Uranuses are usually very strange and very weird about you. Neptune, illusion, art, spirituality. And Pluto, truth, transformation, psychology. So your design is a purposeful, intricate arrangement of multidimensional symbols. These are the symbols. They're multidimensional. And they play out in each and every day of your life. Now it's going to play out differently depending on its configuration. Defined channel, undefined channel, undefined gate. As far as the center itself is undefined, those are all different ways it's going to express itself. The planets are what create movement, flavor, and color. These are what create your very uniqueness, your genetic predispositions, and your way, the thing that makes you solid. So the planet, each planet has a rich mythology, at least 100 years of astrological research, thousands of years for the inner planets, and their own distinct vitality. So now we're going to look at the, the history astrologically, which you can still use, you can still recognize that this is still valid, we are still flowing and evolving. We can't just dump 
tens of thousands of years of history, we can see where we've come from to kind of get a sense of where we're going. 